Hey guys, welcome to Law and Lumber. My name is Rob Morton. I'm an attorney in Northern Virginia, practicing in the areas of domestic relations litigation and consumer bankruptcy matters. I also have a secondary passion in woodworking and custom furniture building, as you can probably tell from the shop where I'm coming at you from. Uh, to those followers that joined after watching me appear on Legal Bites, Nate the Lawyer, Uncivil Law, Hogue Law, Good Logic, or all of the other various LawTube channels, thank you so much for joining in. Without the support from you and the immense support from that LawTube community, this channel quite simply wouldn't exist. Um, on this channel, we're going to tackle a little bit of everything, from legal analysis to building some custom furniture and maybe a few DIY hacks along the way. Regardless of where the channel goes, we're going to try and keep things fun, okay? Now, let's jump into it. Many of you might know that I've been covering the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial taking place in Fairfax Circuit Court. It happens to be just down the road from here. As you might know by now, Johnny Depp has filed a $50 million defamation lawsuit against his former spouse, Amber Heard, stemming from a December 2018 op-ed piece in, which, in the Washington Post in which Depp claims that Heard implied that she was the victim of domestic violence at his hands. Depp has accused Heard of perpetuating a hoax to get him canceled while elevating her own notor notoriety. That forms the basis for her $100 million countersuit for defamation on those grounds. So today, I want to talk about one specific claim that Amber's made in connection with the incident that she alleges occurred at Johnny Depp's Los Angeles penthouse condo on December 15th of 2015. Amber alleges that she and Depp were fighting and that Depp dragged her by her hair through the apartment and eventually ended up headbutting her. Amber, at that point, told Depp she was leaving him and turned away. She then alleges that Depp pushed her onto the bed in the second bedroom pushed her face down onto the mattress and that he put his knee on her back and other foot onto the bed frame while punching her in the back of the head repeatedly. She alleges that this, the foot on the bed frame, caused the bed frame to splinter or break, words that she used interchangeably in the UK and the US litigation. She then states that she can't remember what happened next, only that she remembers some time passing and her friend Rocky Pennington coming into the room to find her on the floor. Here's the issue I noticed when listening to Heard's testimony on this specific incident. The bed, quite simply, could not have broken in the manner that Amber describes. But we can get to that a little bit later. First, let's listen to Amber describe the scene, or at least identify the photo so we get some context for what we're about to see. Yes, it does. Your Honor, I move the admission of Defendants 509. No objection. All right, 509. Will you please tell the jury what this is? That's the bed that Johnny broke. Well, on top of me. Okay, so now we have the photo that identifies the bed itself. Let's take a closer look at that and see if we can't see some more information about it or at least get a little bit more context, okay? Okay, so she's identified the photo. So this is what's in evidence in the Fairfax Circuit Court trial. This is also the photo that was introduced in the UK trial. Now this photo tells us a bunch of information about the bed itself. One, we know that this is the foot of the bed. We know that from a photo I'll show you in a second here. We also know that the, this bed is constructed uh, via essentially uh, timbers. Um, most beds you will see will be a three-quarter inch rail that will meet directly into a post and footboard. Uh, instead, this appears to be a platform bed using rustic timbers to give a chunkier feel to it. We also know this because Amber describes it as being very, very heavy, which you'll hear a little bit later. But let's see if we can't learn any more information about this particular photo. So, Here's something that we discovered in the Fairfax Circuit Court case, and it was discovered incident to various motions to compel and motions for sanctions regarding the metadata that was released. The metadata indicates that this photo was taken on December 16th of 2015. Now, you'll remember that Amber described the events as taking place December 15th in the evening. This photo was not taken until the very next day. Now, let's take a closer look at the bed. This photo was taken from the virtual tour that was provided when uh, Johnny was selling that condo. 
So from this photo, you can actually get a really good idea of the size of the bed and where we're talking about. So down the sides, you can see that those are the timbers. Timber comes, another timber meets, and another timber wraps back. You can actually see here the chunk is still existing. Odd though, this chunk in this photo appears to extend all the way to the edge, whereas the last photo, the chunk looked like it was limited to this area. I'm not sure that's relevant, but it's something, to worth, it's something worth noting. So one of the questions that I had when I first saw this photo is whether this timber itself was a faux or a fake timber, whether someone had basically created the look of a live edge by creating something that looked like this and then wrapping it to bring it down to the bottom. So a three-quarter inch piece and a three-quarter inch piece. Now, upon further inspection of the photo itself, you kind of learn that there's no way that's actually possible. And let me describe why. So blowing that photo up and then adding a little bit of light to it just to enhance the brightness so we can see a little clearer. You can see that this here, see these dark areas? These dark areas are end grain. Wood, when you look at it straight on like this, this is running with the grain. This is the end grain of the wood. The end grain of the wood, when you apply a stain, becomes far, far, far darker than the grain itself. The reason why is the grain pores run this way. When you think of a tree, a tree is growing up like that. When the tree is growing up, everything in here, all the nutrients have to pass up and down. That's what forms the grain structure in wood. So when you cut a piece of wood right across the top and expose the end grain, you are exposing all of those cellular grain structures that pass nutrients from the earth all the way to the leaves. And when you put stain, stain on those, the stain absorbs faster and heavier into those areas which results in this extra darkening. So now that we know about the bed, let's see what happens or let's see what Amber alleges happens in order to cause that break. Okay, so now that we have an idea of what the bed looks like, let's get into the specifics of Amber's allegations. Now, this is the statement that she made in the UK trial. We're gonna walk through the relevant portions here. At this point in time, you can see from the top that she is alleging Johnny had pushed her onto the bed and got on top of her, okay? Now, what you can see is that she is saying that his whole weight was on me and he put his knee on my back and his other foot on the bed frame. This is the part I want you to focus on. Knee on the back, other foot on the bed frame, okay? At the, time that, at the same time, he was punching me in the head, screaming over and over so loudly right in my ear how much he hated me. The bed frame splintered and that's all I remember. She goes on to say that she doesn't remember anything else until her friend Rocky Pennington comes in the room and she's sitting on the floor after Johnny had left. So that's Amber's statement in the UK trial. This is what the UK court uh, basically found her claim to be. This was taken from one of Johnny's responses to uh, either discovery responses or to the UK court's uh, recitation of Amber's allegations. At this point in time, let's take a look at this. All right, so fight continued on the bed. Claimant got on top of Ms. Hurd and placed his knee on her back, similar statement, and other foot on the bed frame while repeatedly punching her in the head. Claimant screamed, mm, we're not sure how we're going to edit this one. I don't think I'm going to leave the profanities in for this particular video. I, bleeping, hate you, over and over again. The bed frame splintered under the weight of the pressure of the claimant's boot. The bed frame splintered under the weight of the pressure of the claimant's boot. So the UK court is basically saying, per Amber, that the reason why the bed splintered was because Johnny's boot had exerted so much pressure that it caused the timber to actually splinter. Okay, so that's the UK court's recitation of Amber's, of Amber's claim. Now, curiously, Whitney, Amber's sister, also gave a statement. Now, hers is a little bit more interesting. In Whitney's statement, she says that when she got there, the bed was disheveled. She noticed it had a very heavy wood frame, which also supports our uh, understanding that this was a timber, uh, solid timber framed bed, uh, and noticed that it had splintered and there was a chip in the wood. I like this word. We're going to focus on that in a minute here. It's going to make a lot of sense soon. 
there was a blonde there was blonde hair and blood stuck in the splinter on the bed frame now that part i'm wondering if you guys are asking questions yourselves uh, it might be explained away by Ember's statement of uh, being leaning against the bed when Rocky got in there, but it seemed kind of odd to me. So, now that we know what the allegations are, let's do this. Let's hear Amber say them in her own words in the Fairfax trial uh, at Thursday's hearing, okay? This is her description of the incident specifically focused on that particular time when she is saying that the bed splintered under Johnny's weight. So let's take a look at this. I was sitting on the edge of the bed, on the carpet of the floor against the, the broken frame of the bed. And there was a low lying bed um, with a really thick wooden uh, frame. And uh, it was broken from his boot trying to get a purchase on it while he was. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. I could feel it. Overruled. Thank you. Please continue. I was there for it. Um, and while he was on top of me, I could feel that. I could feel him trying to get balance. I could feel him slipping. I could hear it. I don't know how I got off the bed. I don't know what happened to me from the time I was, I stopped hearing myself scream. I don't know what happened to me. It's a really weird feeling because I, next thing I remember is laying, leaning against the broken part of the bed and on the carpet and I, my friend saying, oh my God, oh Objection, my God. Objection, your honor. Hearsay. Sustained. Okay. Okay. So that's the relevant part of the testimony for our purposes. Now, the thing that I found curious about that one, well, one, Let's go ahead and clear up the fact that Amber testified there that her head was leaning against the bed, which might explain why a blonde hair was in the chip on the bed. But the most interesting part of that testimony is her testimony saying that she could feel it, that she knew and that she was there. The reason why that's interesting to me is because, one, her face was down per her own testimony. Her testimony was that he was, that Johnny was pushing her head so far into the covers that she was muffled. She felt like she couldn't breathe and his whole weight was on her body. Remember the statement earlier, knee on the back and foot on the bed. Yet she testifies that she can feel him squirming around, or at least trying to gain purchase on the bed. Now, this is important because it also gives you an understanding of where Johnny's boots are and how Amber reaches this conclusion that the boots somehow caused the break in the bed. We'll just have to explore it. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to actually do a little baby mock-up of this bed, and I'm going to explain to you why, given the bed's, uh, bed's construction and the description that Johnny's boots actually caused that break, that this testimony is, uh, for lack of a better term, complete BS and not possible. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a little mock-up of Johnny's bed. Now, this is done with 4x4 pine, which is a little bit smaller, but still the same material that was Johnny's bed. I could tell it was pine. You can tell it was pine because if you look back at those photos, you can see the width between the grain. That gives you an indication that it's a softwood rather than a hardwood. A lot of hardwood you will see will have tighter grain patterns. So now with these timbers, what you're going to see is that in order to get the timber, they generally have to cut almost a full tree. The larger the timber, the larger the tree. But generally, they're all going to be this particular pattern, where you're going to have the circle, the very center of the tree, towards the center of the timber. Now, this is relevant when we start talking about how this is alleged to have occurred. So we have our two lengthwise uh, posts, and then the footboard of the bed. Now, per Amber's testimony, if this is the mattress where my hand is right here, then Johnny's feet are here on the footboard trying to, in her words, gain purchase. Now, the interesting thing about the gaining purchase is it kind of illustrates the problem here. Grain, as we discussed earlier, runs this way. These are very tight concentric cellular, or tight cellular structures. Imagine if they were, uh, let's say, mm, call them straws. 
if everything here was a straw running in this direction, and let's say that you wanted to divide those straws, you would actually have to put something in between those straws and wiggle and pry your way in. Now the reason why that's important here is because with this type of wood, and actually with all woods, uh, you need something sharp to get in between those grains. If you put a blunt object up against here, it's just not going to do anything. Um, for anyone who's ever hammered pine, you know that you're going to dent the pine before you ever break it off because you're hitting it with a blunt object. Let's illustrate what Amber was describing as Johnny doing. So, now that we've got it situated this way, what we're looking at is mattress over here, Johnny allegedly over here. Now, I don't have any fancy boots, but I do have work boots. So, we're going to try and illustrate what it is that Amber's saying with uh, a Timberland Pro. So, we have our work boot. Now, you can see as the work boot goes in, there's no way, given the size of that work boot, that you're going to get anywhere enough pull, period. It just slides right off. There's nothing it's ever going to catch. It's because the tip of the work boot, no matter how sharp it is, is not sharp enough to cut into that grain structure. It's just not going to happen. It doesn't matter if it's a leather sole, skinny shoe, unless it's one of those super spy boots that has a kick out blade, it ain't going to get in between that grain. All right? Let me show you the only way that you can get into that grain with a sharp object, like, for example, a knife. If I wiggle a knife in here, you can see that I can wiggle back and forth and I have what Amber was describing, purchase. There is no grip that I can get either, either with my hand or a boot that does anything to dig into that grain that would cause that type of fracture. So let me do one more little thing to show you something. So here's what we've done. We've taken away the long rails, leaving only the footrest. The only fathomable way that I can see that particular break happening, as described by Amber Heard, is something like this. The sharp knife is the only thing that can penetrate the grain in order to cause that split. Sharp knife and leverage is the only thing that can make that pop. So when you're looking at wood like this, when you have grain running this way, you see this, that type of break is caused by this, sharp knife leverage. And I'll tell you why that makes me very curious. This is why Amber Heard's testimony bothered me that day. Because what I saw was this type of damage, which is what's reflected on that particular bed. That damage is caused by a knife. Now, I'm not saying what this is. I'll leave that for the judge, the jury, and the trial attorneys to decide if they want to argue that point. But to me, I don't know. What do you guys think? Why don't you leave your answers in the comments below? Thank you very much for watching this video. If you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, uh, it really does mean a lot. This community has been fantastic to me. I very much love being a part of it. I wish to continue being a part of it. And the only way I can do that is by your help. If you haven't checked out the rest of LawTube, please do so. Uh, you can reach them via any of the links that you'll see in Legal Bites' coverage of this trial. Um, hope to be coming to you guys soon with additional information. But anyways, in the interim, thank you for watching. Hope this helps you guys understand. I am just a lawyer and woodworker, but to me this is pretty compelling. Thanks.